All right. In this next uh, little short video, we're going to talk about dates and how to do some date arithmetic. And we're also going to create some computed fields, some of the things you absolutely ne need to know how to do with a database. Now, in this particular problem that I gave you, I ask you to create, a, a, do some queries based on day of the week. And so you may think to yourself, well, how on earth can I do that? Um, because when I look over here at the data file or the table, I get this crazy number in here, some giant integer. Who knows what it is? Okay. Well, if we go back to the SNAP data, uh, database site over at Stanford, we'll learn from the metadata that that review time is actually what's known as a Linux timestamp. And the Linux timestamp is basically the number of seconds elapsed since January 1st, 1970. Now, you might think to yourself, well, that's a crazy way to do dates. Well, that may be true, but we still have to deal with it. So now the question is, is that should we modify the table to put in a date that we can tell what it is? Or should we do this in the report of the query? And what I find is that uh, it depends. Okay, But in this particular case, I'm going to have you modify the table. And then we're going to put a, a second date column in here that's something that's a little more accessible. And it would be what that does with by putting it in the table, if we do a lot of reports on this data, it'll allow us to do it'll make, use a, a lot more flexibility and it'll dramatically decrease the number of calculations in the report. So let's let's go ahead and do that. We're going to we're going to add a new uh, field here. And it's not going to be a an explicit field. It's going to be something we call calculated and it's going to be a date. So we'll do that and it's going to bring up something called the expression builder, okay? Now the expression builder has this three elements, the expression elements, uh, the categories and the values it can take. So in this particular case, we know that the date timestamp is over here in this review time uh, field. So if we click on structured, which is the name of our uh, my table, okay, there's a the list of the fields I can use. So I want to use review time. I'll double click on that. Now, the first thing we want to do, and you may have seen this when you're searching on the Internet and converting Unix time, is you want to calculate the number of days. So we'll take whatever that number is. We'll divide it by 3,600 seconds per hour and then multiply 24 hours per day. And that should give us a number of days. Now here comes the kind of tricky part. Um, now we know that, the, as I said earlier, Unix time is based on uh, the number of seconds elapsed since January 1st, 1970. So within Access and Excel and and some other databases, the, the functions allow you to kind of do what I call uh, date arithmetic. That is, being able to add days and seconds and minutes and hours and that sort of thing. So what we're going to do here is we're going to then, we need to add this number to January 1st, 1970. How do we do that? Well, uh, we can use a, a function. Let's go to the functions, built-in functions. We can go to date. And then we can go over here to something called date serial. And date serial is basically um, a function that creates an internal serial number based on some date that you give it. And then it will uh, add this uh, uh, together. So we'll get uh, the year, it looks like 1970, and month, and month. Okay, now that looks pretty good. So what, let's look at our calculation again. We're going to calculate the number of days. We're going to add it to this date time. That's going to calculate a, an internal date number. But the representation is going to be a, a date function uh, that we can see. So let's see what happens here. That looks okay. And lo and behold, if we look at here, we say, hey, there we go. Those look like dates that I can work with. Now, the last part of this, so if we were looking at just doing regular old date kind of things, we could probably create some search function queries based on this date, but we don't know what the day of the week is. Now, again, when you start adding fields, you are increasing the size of the data file. But in this particular case, it might be helpful. And because we're uh, in, in my class, you're all kind of beginners at this. 
let's create a second uh, <coughs> excuse me a second uh, field over here and we'll just call it the day of the week and uh, to make it simple so here we're gonna do a calculated field okay now we're gonna say it's date time but I want you to watch what happens here okay the field that we're going to use is called field one right because that's this that's the date in the in a, in a form that we can understand so there's field one okay now the next thing we're gonna do is find the day of the week so do we have a function that does that first place to go don't try to be clever uh, or as I say why be clever when you can be good okay and sure enough we have a weekday function called weekday now let's see what it says returns a variant of the type integer uh oh we just dec declared this as a as a date will that be a problem well I don't think so so what we'll go in here and we'll put in week day surround this with the uh, with uh, with uh, parenthesis and we'll do a calculation now what happened here okay so let's go over to design view and see what design view did okay the result type is uh, let's this one is a date time okay the format we didn't tell it the format so let's give it uh, it still thinks it's a date type maybe we want to make this an integer because that's what it's supposed to do right and then let's save that it's gonna ask me to save you save and then we're gonna go back and sure enough, there's the day of the week.